Following the monster success of the first two Deadpool pictures, Ryan Reynolds and co. sought out to produce a third installment. Little did they know, this production was to encounter challenges and opportunities that no one would have predicted. This is the making of Deadpool and Wolverine. Ryan Reynolds was first cast as the popular Marvel superhero Deadpool in 2009's X-Men Origins Wolverine. Fans were highly dissatisfied about the direction the film had taken the character, with many hoping that Reynolds would be given a second chance to do the character justice. Seven long years later, Deadpool finally hit theaters. The film was unlike any superhero movie that had come before thanks to its R-rated humor and fourth wall breaks. It breathed new life into a genre that had grown stale, and its 2018 sequel would continue the good work with some fans dubbing it as the greatest sequel of all time. In a time when the X-Men movie franchise was in a major decline in quality, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool films and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine swan song Logan were gems of the superhero genre. Originally, the second and third Deadpool movies were to be developed in tandem, but the first film's director Tim Miller left the projects due to creative differences with Ryan Reynolds. At one point, Reynolds even doubted that a third film would ever happen, with the franchise looking to shift focus to an X-Force spinoff. X-Force is just a marketing tool designed by Fox executives to keep Josh Brolin employed. It doesn't exist. And Deadpool's cinematic future was cast even further into doubt with the announcement of Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox, the studio behind the entire X-Men movie franchise. Considering Disney's status as a family-friendly company and the overall tone of their existing Marvel Cinematic Universe, it appeared as if there would be no room for further Deadpool movies. But Disney CEO Bob Iger insisted that the company was open to developing R-rated Marvel films, such as Deadpool 3, and further hope for the potential film would soon blossom as Reynolds began meeting with the studio. Bringing Deadpool into the Marvel Cinematic Universe would allow for a broader range of supporting characters, but there would also be challenges in making the character fit within the tone and story of the established franchise. And when Reynolds met for the first time with the architect of the MCU, Kevin Feige, he received some disappointing news. I always wanted you to come back. My first meeting with Kevin Feige it was about doing a, a, a movie with the two of us, a, a, a Deadpool Wolverine movie. Um, and that was not possible at the time. But by late 2022, the film was beginning to take shape. Free Guy director Sean Levy was to helm the director's chair, replacing Deadpool 2's David Leitch. One thing that Ryan and I were really united in is wanting to make Deadpool 3 uh, very much consistent and um, contiguous with the franchise DNA, but to see where we could evolve. Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, who had penned the first two movies, would ultimately return as writers following a previous draft by the Molyneux sisters. And in an official announcement teaser which took the internet by storm, Reynolds confirmed that Hugh Jackman would return as Wolverine for the film. So I really thought I was done, like I was at peace with it. And Ryan did try to cajole me in it for years, annoyingly, years. Come on, come on, come on. Um, someone said to me, I think it was, I think it was Deb, I think it was my wife, she said, oh, you know, after this, what is it you really want to do? And I was just driving down a day later and I thought, what do I want? It just came to me like that and I rang Ryan as soon as I arrived and he was floored. He was absolutely, yeah, it, Hugh just happened to call at that perfect moment and express that he'd be interested in coming back um, and doing this one more time. Not only do you have two icon actors playing their most iconic roles, but you have two characters whose dynamic is already famously fraught, the mouth and the laconic man of few words. What a great formula for storytelling. The script was tailored in a way as to not tarnish the legacy of 2017's Logan. Uh, we pitched the story to Hugh uh, several days after he officially finally signed on. All because of this device they have in the Marvel world of moving around timelines, now we can go back. The story's pre. Logan. And so I don't have to screw with the Logan timeline, which was important to me and I think probably to the fans too. The cast was further fleshed out with many actors returning from the previous installments, including Morena Bakarin, Rob Delaney, Leslie Uggams, and Caron Sony, just to name a few. 
Ryan's like taking full advantage of the MCU and like playing with all the toys. It also feels like it's coming at a perfect time for the MCU because it's ready for a little bit of a shakeup and he's definitely like shaking it up. Emma Corrin was cast as the film's villain Cassandra Nova, a twin sister of Charles Xavier. Matthew McFadden would play an important part in the film as a Time Variance Authority agent who recruits Deadpool, and many actors from previous Marvel and X-Men films would reprise their roles as well, including Aaron Stamford as Pyro and Jennifer Garner as Elektra. This movie, starting with Ryan and Hugh, but definitely in other areas, um, some of whom the world knows about, Matthew McFadden, Emma yep. Corrin, um, really just going to work is a delight. A plethora of secret cameos were also to be filmed, with Taylor Swift, Henry Cavill, and Daniel Radcliffe all rumored to be involved at some point. I, I love the proliferation of casting rumors because there's so many. It's impossible to know what's real and what's uh, made up. But has the word dazzler ever escaped anyone's lips when you've been in a room with Taylor Swift? Um, it sure escapes the lips of social media every day. And that's all I'm going to say. Would she be a good dazzler? Sounds like a great idea. Production should start sometime just before summer. The shooting is the short, sort of easier part. It's then it's, yeah. you know, it's it's the lead up, the prep, the writing. It's the shooting's quick. And then you have, you know, the edit process where, you know, that, that's where the movie gets really made is the editor. So in May of 2023, principal production on the film began in London. We're making very much the movie we hoped to make. This Deadpool movie is very much aligned with the DNA of the Deadpool franchise. The story, the tone, the movie itself leans into that gift of having Deadpool and Wolverine co-starring in a movie for the first time. But this was in parallel with a huge obstacle that was rearing its ugly head. 2022 had seen the launch of generative AI software such as ChatGBT, Midjourney, and Stable Diffusion kicking off the artificial intelligence boom and raising major concerns about the future of artists across every medium. Just weeks before filming on Deadpool 3 began, the Writers Guild of America went on strike over the use of AI in Hollywood and other issues such as residuals from streaming media. Since Ryan Reynolds was a credited writer on the film, the strike meant that he was barred from improvising, a talent which he is well known for, and he had to stick completely to the script. I mean, the writing process actually on Deadpool movies doesn't really end until they take the movie away from us, literally. Like, it's they have to snatch the microphone out of my hand in the edit room. Many non-action scenes were completed early on, such as Deadpool's birthday scene, which reunited the cast of the first two films. Within a few weeks, production shifted to the film's epic battle in front of the 20th Century Fox logo, featuring Deadpool, Wolverine, and other characters. A brilliant image parodying the Disney Fox acquisition and taking inspiration from Return of the Jedi's climactic lightsaber duel. Images of the two actors in costume became a viral sensation, with fans ecstatic to finally see Hugh Jackman donning the iconic yellow outfit. But all was not well in Hollywood, and midway through the shoot, the Screen Actors Guild also went on strike. The production of Deadpool 3 was completely shut down and Disney had to endure unforeseen expenses to maintain the existing sets. I somehow thought this strike, this second strike would be averted. Uh, and then suddenly it was upon us and I had to send several hundred people home. Things were getting ugly in Hollywood where an unknown executive was quoted as saying that the plan was to drag this thing out until union members started losing their homes. In another incident, NBC Universal illegally pruned trees on Barham Boulevard to allegedly prevent picketers from having shade during the hot summer months. But the Screen Actors Guild also received criticism when it attempted to control its members' Halloween costumes, a decision which Ryan Reynolds satirized in a brilliant tweet. Reynolds did contribute to the cause though, pledging alongside other A-listers to make financial contributions and pushing for residual changes that would benefit struggling actors. The strike went on for months with no end in sight. Negotiations continued to break down and many feared that the strike would continue into 2024, meaning films like Deadpool 3 were sure to be facing lengthy delays in their release. I don't use this word lightly, but I am yearning for a resolution that feels fair and equitable and gets this industry back to work. In early November, a tentative deal was finally reached and by early December, it was approved, allowing actors to finally return to work 
and production of Deadpool 3 to recommence at last. As filming of the climactic battle continued, so too did major leaks, as onlookers recorded spoiler-heavy videos which were plastered all over the internet. To combat this, Ryan Reynolds took the brilliant strategy of creating his own bogus leaks, showing Mickey Mouse, the Predator, and Steve Urkel participating in the film. At the end of January, the film wrapped production at last. The filmmakers had made use of the long strike by knocking out as much of the editing and visual effects works as they could, and ultimately the film's release was only delayed by three months. Was there any consideration in the filming in your first 35 days, knowing that the strike might happen, where you wanted to shoot scenes that had VFX so you could get those done? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course I do. That would have been smarter than I am. <laughs> that would have been so savvy. And on February 11th, a two and a half minute trailer aired during the Super Bowl, revealing the film's title as Deadpool and Wolverine. The popularity of this trailer cannot be understated. With over 365 million views the first day alone, it immediately became the most watched movie trailer in history. Not long ago, casual audiences didn't know who Deadpool was. But in just a few short years, he has become one of the most popular characters in pop culture and established one of the most successful movie franchises of all time. Deadpool's humor and style resonated with movie fans around the world and so much of this is because of the man behind the mask. Ryan Reynolds is the driving force of this franchise, both as an actor and a writer-producer. His mastery of both comedic and emotional work have helped establish him as one of the most popular actors in the world. With Reynolds now reunited with Hugh Jackman, this highly anticipated third installment is set to be one of the biggest films of the year, perhaps ever. And fans can't wait to see what the future holds. We're thrilled. I mean, it's just I cannot wait to uh, to unleash that that movie. For me, working with Hugh um, is a dream come true. But working with Logan and having Logan and Wade together in a movie is is beyond any dream I would ever uh, be audacious enough to have. So I'm I'm really really super fucking excited.